cloud. I'm not going to project it up because it's not on the internet, unfortunately. It will be uh, recorded and posted. Post. Are we live now? <laughs> we are live. Okay, I will call the, the Wednesday, June 14th, 2023 meeting of the Trees and Greenery Committee to order. Uh, first thing on our agenda is the acceptance of minutes for the May 10th meeting. I found some errors in that relative to the, I don't have a copy of it with me. I Anyone have agenda. a copy? I've got the agenda on my phone. No. The agenda is not correctly, I mean, the minutes are not correctly posted online. That was one thing I wanted to make a Michael. statement. The link online doesn't go. Look down at the bottom. Minutes. The dates are wrong. Oh. <clears throat> down at the bottom? Yeah. Next meeting is 10. Next meeting is June 10th. It was today. 14th. 14th. So that's going to be important. There was one other area down there, but do you want to okay. so um do you have a list or should we should you just email it to uh with Stephanie would be the yeah, one that would I'll take a look at everything else. Go ahead. Oh uh, Joanna and uh oh I'm sorry. <laughs> so just the next meeting date was incorrect. Was there other items that were There's a reference of a walk in the South Cemetery. Oh. In fact, the walk was at the Hall Cemetery. cemetery. Mm. That's all. Okay. Right there. Right yep. There. Well, it's south of South Street. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll grant you that. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. <laughs> so, uh, any other corrections? Uh, yeah. <laughs> No. So with that one change, we have a motion to accept the minutes from the May meeting. So moved. Oops. Uh, any one discussion? Oh. Well, what one one point was there were two two changes. One was the future meeting, and then the other one was reference to the all cemetery versus cellar. Yes. So we will make those two changes. Okay. Uh, with those changes, um, Pat so made a motion. Dennis seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Tree removal requests. First, we have the Hall Cemetery removals. Um, 24 Norway maples, three apple, two box elder, two cherry, two elm, one ash, uh, one red oak. And with this one motion, we could match our <laughs> demolition of trees for the last year. <laughs> no, we had the, the Panaway Manor. Right. Yeah, okay. That's right. Clear cut. Mm. May I ask a question of Max? So, um, Petra can't be here because she has a medical appointment. And um, I was out there with uh, Sue, and we walked the uh, the tree property. And uh, the request is, can we save the apple tree that's leaning on her fence over into her yard? Sure. Uh, I I don't have a problem with it. Um, obviously. Uh, but he's using, she's using it, excuse me, she's using it as um, clothesline. a clothesline, right? It's attached to I, I have no problem. So we can remove the tag from that one? Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. I just, uh, so the reason I posted pretty much everything along the fence line going down was because that's where we're, um, and Sue, you can feel free to step in and, and say anything about it. But um, my, my presumption was that we were going to be putting some kind of clearance not trail because i don't want to use the term trail like it's going to be this heavily used walking path but that um that trail for accessibility getting back into the cemetery my thought was that it would be relatively close to that fence line mm -hmm. because that tree is in that quote unquote trail i marked it for removal but we can just as easily move around it and it's pretty small yeah it's not yeah insignificant to the project and i think if um Petra is getting some use out of it we should accommodate that and allow her that's to great that, so. she'll that's be very nice. happy mm -hmm. thank yeah. you I, I would like to make a friendly amendment that if it's deemed at some point necessary to remove that tree um that we would go ahead and, and have the authority to move that remove that tree I don't want to preclude um you know appropriate access to a public space um you know I, I think it's uh, we just need to have flexibility to manage that space. Would it would it 
does this tree significantly impact ability no. to access it? No. 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 Yeah, I don't see the reason we would, but some point in the future, um, it may need to be pruned. It may need to be, you know, work may need to be done on it, or it may be, You're right. be removed. And I think the reality too, with more, so obviously no one's currently walking through that area now, but, uh -huh. you know, given the future potential use of this site, the roots may be impacted. It could start to decline. It could pose mm -hmm. some issues or structural issues in the future. Mm -hmm. And I guess we would just reassess. You know, yeah. Look, reassess. yeah. Look at it as it, as it crops up, but. So would we, would you come back in at that time? I mean, if this is well, I, I was away. actually making the motion to be able to have the flexibility yeah. um, to do what's necessary, but um, you know, if, they, a, if, they, if the committee wants us to come back in, that's fine. I, I, I guess I'd I don't I'd feel more comfortable if we came back in or some future board considered it. I mean, I, I mean I'm just think, envisioning someone saying, "Well, I didn't know it in two years. I didn't know anything about that." And, um, so that that would be my suggestion anyway. <clears throat> Any other discussion? Is there anyone here from for the public interested oh, in what, I, you know, the hall uh, cemetery? <laughs> Um, Petra also mentioned she was wondering why there was no markers, you know, having a double side road markers going down to um, the actual entrance to the gate from the survey, you know, points going down. They only pointed on her side closest to the fence, and she wanted to know if some of the trees were still in a section that were still on her property, but more so how are we going to determine where the middle of the path is if we don't have two points, one on each side? I think that's a Peter question. Yeah, I mean, the intent of this was not to, to delineate the pathway. Yeah. It was to identify the trees necessary um, to create the pathway. Uh, prior, you know, when, once we create the pathway, we'll delineate it and then make it clear where it is. And that's when we left that I, that was pretty much her feeling that um, I mean she wasn't upset but questioned it so I said I would bring it up so she has no problem with the pathway going down so she just had a question why the survey didn't have to yeah and it was it was because that it was focused on the trees yeah uh, any members of the public have any comments on this. Uh, any questions from the board, from the committee? So if this process moves forward, if we selected the tree removal company, then will you supervise the work? <coughs> um, uh, do you want to? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can uh, lead off on this one. Yeah, um, I obtained. Sue, do you want to just come up to a mic just so we, yeah, thanks. <laughs> um, this is where I usually sit. Oh, okay. I'm sure. <laughs> Michael sits there. Um, I, I did get three estimates. Um, I've been working with Suzanne Woodland, you know, to make sure that it was all right to go ahead and get estimates and things like that. So I've gotten the three estimates. So if the tree removal is okay today, then I'll go back to Suzanne and start the process of the RFP. Is that correct, RFP? It depends on what your quotes are. If your quotes are under, under 19,200. Yeah, the work. 15. Yeah, the, so you, just three quotes is fine. You don't need to do an RFP. Okay, so I'll take it to Suzanne and then she'll um, go on with it from there and contact Peter and, and get us rolling from that point on. And I would assume like any other city project, um, even though an outside contractor is doing it, it will still be overseen by someone from the DPW that will be checking on, make sure things are clear and and what's what's going on so that's correct uh, thank you uh for no more questions uh, i think it's going to be a challenge to get that big ash tree out of there mm -hmm. i don't know how you're going to get it out of there big crane uh, again yeah. yeah suzanne will have to uh it's in the process um it, we go through with this, then the legal department will contact all the abutters of what's going on. And we would approach Brad Long about um, using his direct space um, right into the cemetery. I mean, I have no idea what he opposed, but 
I, I don't anticipate that. It won't be a big impact on his property. So, but that will be one of the challenges or part of the process to get this done properly. And that includes stump grinding of all 24 of those Norway maples? Well, it's, we've added some trees. So um, yes, there is stump grinding involved, but as I've learned, once we pick a, a contractor and come back, things will change and, you know, the city will go through everything with the um, contractor who's doing it, so. So just to clarify, Mike, the contracts with the city, the committee is not the one that's right. running the, the, you know, suited right. the legwork to identify, you know, three quotes, but, you know, Max and our department will be managing this project. Right. Uh, we'll coordinate with the abutters. We'll make sure there's proper access and that the, the work gets done properly. So, right. so I got it right. <laughs> yep, <exactly. laughs> I, I know the process by now. <laughs> Once I turned, I was sort of like turning over a kid or a baby to somebody else, but it, it, all of it's gone well. So with other projects, so. Do we have a motion to recommend removal of the trees listed here for the Hall, Hall Cemetery? So moved. With the exception Minus, of the apple. Yes. Minus the apple tree. Minus the, Minus apple, the tree. apple tree. Second that will by... be revisited if need be. So it, it's, it's listed as three apple right now. So it'll be two apple. Two apples. Okay. The minutes show not the one leaning on the fence. Okay, for Joanne, uh, who does our minutes benefit? It was motion was made by Pat Price. and seconded oh, by. For the, well, that was the initial motion for the tr <laughs> for the apple tree. Don't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my motion. Well, it was a request. Is that a motion? Yeah, I think we'll Peter was say, first. Yeah. You were you were yes. second, but with the yours yes. would be an amendment to okay. change. But I, friendly amendment. Friendly I, amendment. Yeah. Please say <laughs> the apple tree. <laughs> Accepted. So, all in favor of the motion as amended, <clears throat> say aye or raise a hand. Aye. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Ten Merrimack Street on Miller Avenue. Thank you, Sue. So. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Sue. So. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, are you here for any particular? Uh, posting here. I'm Lauren Wolf. I live in Atlantic Heights, so I think okay. The last is the Hisla Park. Okay. I just had a couple of questions. Yeah, we can. Um, <laughs> is it okay if we address Hisla Park first? And sure. I'd move to bring uh, forward the last item to now. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to come to the table? And so we need to. Do we need to motion and, and accept that? No. Well, aye. We accept. We accept. <laughs> Thank you. Uh huh. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so the Hislop Park, um, so these four trees uh, are a response to an oak failure that occurred, I believe it was, was it over this past weekend? Yeah, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago? Um, oh, geez. That recent. Anyway, yeah, so. Uh, it crushed the uh, top of the ball field. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so uh, the cause of that was, I think years ago, I wasn't present for it, but the um, that area was backfilled after some uh, phase of construction or renovation of that project. And uh, we've identified four other trees that have also been backfilled. And you can tell because there's no root taper on any of these trees. Given the vicinity to the playground, the field itself, there's some stands out um, on the third baseline. Um, we just figured it's better to get ahead of it before another tree failure occurs. And then wow. did you have? Uh... Yes. Okay. Well, I first wanted to say, I can't believe how quickly they cleaned it up because it was an absolute mess and kids are there all the time. So <laughs> sure. Uh, Lauren Wolf and I live on Crescent Way in Atlantic Heights. Um, I'm in that park a lot. A lot of people are. So my only um, I have a couple of questions. There's a tree that is split on the path. It's about 20 yards in from the very beginning. Okay. And it just, it's one of those things we all sit and say, oh, it's still up there today. So I was wondering if they're taking down those trees that do look like they're going to fall. <laughs> that, so yeah, so uh, that wasn't on my radar for okay. this. I can go out there and check. Um, we do respond to hazardous trees. That is obviously not a more maintained area, but certainly when there is a hazard such as that, we will go out and inspect and and yeah, it's pretty easy to see. It's, okay. Yeah. It's, said, uh, so from the start of the trail where it's sort of chained off 
Right. Um, no, no, no. Right where the sign is. And okay. the bench, okay. it's about 10 yards in on the left. You okay. can't miss it. Yeah, I'll yeah. go. Uh, it almost could hit the water thing because it's leaning that way. I see. Okay. So yeah, I'll go just, and uh, I'll go and check it out. What kind of tree is it, Gino? I don't know. It's a skinny one, though. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Is it got green needles? <laughs> <laughs> Um, my other question is when these get taken out, is there a way that the grinding and the, you know, the pieces could go on a trail or go somewhere in there? Uh, I see no reason why we can't, you know, if it's advantageous for us to, you know, use that wood somehow, somewhere, I see no reason why we can't. Okay. Um, it's going to just come down to, um, I don't know what it'll come down to, actually. I think it is so, just all so circumstantial. I can, speak, I can speak to that. Yes. So would the intent be that the residents would um, voluntarily spread the, 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 the chips or would they want the city staff to um, take the time to spread? Well, I am also. It's fine. It's yeah. No, no, no. I am also a member of the, the garden club and we work pretty hard in lots of areas. So I would certainly propose it to the group. I would, I, I think it's such an advantage when you have it there. Some of those trails are pretty down to the roots mm -hmm. and it would just kind of help even if it's just the beginning or whatever. So if the city's not able to do that, I can certainly reach out to our neighbors and say, who can help on these days? How we've accommodated requests like that in the past is we'll drop a whole load of chips in one particular spot and then volunteers will come out and we'll barrow them to trails. So oh, that'd be fabulous. Um I know so I've had conversations with uh Gather. Is that are, is anyone familiar with Gather? The yeah the food pantry. Yeah. Food so we've been I've been talking with um uh, a person who manages that and you know they don't want any of our emerald ash borer wood chips because of the <laughs> you know just the nature of those chips. But um I've been brainstorming a lot of ways of utilizing our wood chips in ways that aren't just throwing them away or yeah. sending them off to a dump so i can absolutely coordinate that and obviously as Peter said, it depends on you know the logistics of you know spreading those wood chips after the fact but yeah we can certainly work something out i think terrific and then my um my other question is on the 400 trees could any go into hislop park i've heard that it can't go onto public property but it yeah. feels like that's such a a win-win at this point, we're pretty, all those trees are either planted Spoken or accounted for, but we okay. plant every year, every spring, we do anywhere from like 100 to 150 trees, I think is what we're planning for next spring. So uh, okay. we can certainly throw some trees in those areas that are now uh, having trees removed out of. Great. Yeah. Done. And then my, for then I know, <laughs> I should have come another time. Now, so. No, I have one more, one more point. And maybe it goes on to an agenda. I'm just not yeah. sure. But the, um, the park under the bridge, which has kind of phased into being completed by the state. I'm just not sure if there's any future, if it's going to be tabled. Is it a fall project, next spring project? Is it anywhere on our project list? So are you referring to planting trees along the edge? No, no, no. Or the park itself? No, I'm just curious on what the what the uh, vision is or what the process, where we are at with underneath the, so uh, the static web. The, the I-95. Yes, um, we have so the, the That is a state, a state property. Yep. Um, in the past, we had a license agreement with the state. That license agreement expired um, 10 years ago. Yep. Um, and the state has... A drainage that drops into the center uh, off the I-95 bridge. It drops literally into the middle of the park in a number of spots. It used to run down the side of the um, the structure of the of the bridge holding the bridge up. Uh, so it was the discharge was in a more managed um, manner. Okay. Their current design does not provide that managed approach to stormwater, and it's not in a configuration that is conducive to having people in the park. Uh, because debris and things like that would be spilling off the bridge uh, into that space. Mm. We've reached out to the uh, state and asked them to address this. Um, and we would not recommend uh, putting a park in that space until those issues are resolved. Um, and we also need to get the state's blessing. Um, so the challenge with putting parks under bridges is material does drop off the, the deck of the bridge uh, periodically. Uh, and the reason we got we let the, the license lapse was because we were seeing chunks of bridge yeah. dropping down and, yeah. and landing in the, the basketball court area yeah. and somebody could have been killed. Huh. Um, so 
But they did fix all that. They they did. However, Bridges um, are notorious for uh, continued uh, well, look decline. at Philadelphia. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was a burning truck underneath it, but right, but <laughs> which accelerated things. Uh, but your point is well taken. Uh, bridges do decay over time, so we wanted to uh, have a more um, uh, comprehensive approach uh, prior to, excuse me, um, advocating for it being open. We have reached out to the state, however. We have asked them to participate, um, and it was as of probably a month or two ago. Jackie Pitts um, mm -hmm. has been an advocate for this. She has. So she keeps, uh, keeps okay. us aware of the okay. need. I just didn't know if there was anything the community or whatever could do to see if we can get it to an, another step. But if um, you know, I might maybe reach out to the DOT to ask them to address the drainage issue so that it could be um, okay um, more easily managed. All right. Uh, so All right. you know, at this point, we don't have monies budgeted to reestablish that. Uh, the the Hislop Park is a is a great asset to the area. There's the the community garden. Uh, area yep. and there's the there's the road that goes to Schiller Station. Um, that's it's an unmanaged space, but it is used by fishermen and other folks. So it's a big open area. How do they uh, get there? You go to the gate that's there and you wiggle through. You either wiggle through or you walk around the fence. Oh. Um, so wait. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate your though. time. I know it does. I understand that, people a... do that. <laughs> Shh. Anyways, thank you very much. Thanks. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. For thank you for taking care of your neighborhood <laughs> and you volunteering welcome. the labor. That's <clears throat> so, lovely. I have a motion for removal, uh, recommend removal at Hisla Park. One comment or addition. Uh, there's a red pine yes, 15 well, feet I, behind I, the one that you already taken out. I take them both. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's been yeah. smashed on both sides with whoever did the previous dirt work. Uh, oh, okay. Mitch, run it on both sides. Okay. Right behind it, the other one. Should we add the uh, the split tree too to yeah. if we're adding trees? Yeah. If, if already, that much of a hazard, we have to go in anyway. If you're already so. out there, you're already on site. Yeah. I mean, yeah. one more red pine. Okay. Was gonna, was gonna end Do the you have a photo thing. of it or anything? Yeah, I'm kind of right Okay. Right behind you. Yes, yeah, so let me, I'll just make a note as long as. Oh, well, yeah. Two thirds dead in the back side, and it's got this on the front side. Yeah. It's, it's right next to it. Yeah, that's. That seems that seems significant enough to yeah take it down. So we have a motion to remove move made those by trees, add that red two. pine, right, and yeah, whatever split that tree. something split tree. tree. Cool. And make make sure I think that would be important to be like a citizen request of that split tree. Yeah, sure. I'll make that motion. Made motion for all of that was made by Dennis second. and seconded by Pat. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, did we do 10 mer no 10 no. Merrimack. Yep, so uh, ash tree, is this the, yeah, go ahead. We'll probably the same one. Could we just take a little zoom back and yep. just kind of look at the landscape of the whole? I mean, we have 13 ash that are being requested mm -hmm. to be removed, and they're they're big trees. That Dennis, I think, brought this up too. Um, and there is chatter in town about all the big trees being moved kind of been removed and um and it would be all, you know always good to message you know about emerald ash borer for the citizens so we could educate the public so they wouldn't think that we're just willy-nilly out there chopping the big trees um so what else is on the docket as far as the ash removal and the whole landscape of are there 30 more trees being assessed i know that <laughs> we talked about, you know, that they will be, they will, you will look at the canopy of the tree and see how far, how distressed the tree is and take it at that point. Is that sort of our motive? I, so um, I guess to explain maybe where my, where my mindset is at, at least as far as what I'm introducing to the committee for ash trees for removal related to EAB is that if it looks relatively healthy right now, I'm not concern so if it's putting out foliage and it looks relatively okay not completely um like no significant dead i think is kind of my my cutoff because then obviously you're going to have large branches dropping and that's a hazard so the idea would be to then come in and just remove that tree or post it for removal uh -huh. if it's generally 
if the health if the canopy looks relatively healthy, but there is blonding, there are exit holes, there are clear signs of EAB, uh -huh. it's now on my radar and I'm waiting for it to sort of become that hazard because I know it will be eventually. Does the does the the um uh, evidence of the blonding and does that is that really a, a weakening of the tree right there at those spaces? Is that just a, a hazard? Yeah, the, the blonding is woodpeckers and they're finding the insects. Right. So for the insects to be in there to a population that the woodpeckers are then attracted to them tells us that the insects have been there sometimes two or three years. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, one insect, one woodpecker, unlikely. Mm -hmm. Usually the blonding happens two thirds up in the tree. Right. When you see blonding way down to the bottom of the tree, that tree is loaded with insects. Mm. Oh, that's a good it, thing. Because yeah. it, it's moving, it's it, you know, it's lost its space mm -hmm. at the top and it's moving its way mm -hmm. down. Okay. The biggest problem right now, and they don't have the answer to it, to the best that I've been checking into, is that when ash trees are infected, something else is happening chemically to the wood that makes it very, very weak. Oh. When we were first cutting trees in Canterbury and Loudoun, 13, 20, 13, 20, 15 range, mm -hmm. You know, 15, 20 inch diameter stems were just smashing and exploding when they hit the ground, not just, you know, falling over and kind of breaking one or two spots. Um, we did an arborist work day up at Canterbury Shaker Village, and I probably had 40 or 50 ash trees taken out. Um, and they were just, just exploding. So the wood becomes very, very weak. Woodworkers are complaining that they can't work with the wood anymore. Ash gets bent and, you know, steam bent and turned into chairs and all kinds of stuff and everything else. Uh, and the wood itself is degrading at a some kind of chemical level uh, that the, the wood is falling apart. Mm -hmm. So when you do see a tree in decline and other issues with ash, it you know, lifts it up probably higher than anything else okay. uh, just because those big chunks are falling out of those trees. Mm -hmm. um, and we've seen this all over the state. That's really helpful because mm -hmm. of our personal property up in Guilford, um, we're going to have, I don't know, probably 10 trees removed. And one is that really tall ash. and last year it looked like an ash and this year it is like dead and it has a lot of blonding and I keep telling my husband it's not going to fall down he said we've got to get it out of there the kids oh. play out there and so ash is much so different is helpful I mean they're standing dead pines all over the whole state and pines fall apart and just kind of yes. you know, fall themselves you know they still can come down can do some damage but a pine tree will stay standing for a long time uh -huh. you know okay. pretty dead those are some branches looks pretty ugly um, but the ash for finding that wood is very, very weak. Wow. So it does two things. Thank One, you. poses a different hazard than where the sort of there's on our radar. And secondly, it increases the cost of removal tremendously because you can't use that tree to remove itself anymore. Yes. yes. Um, so we worked a lot of arborists Safety to try to get them issue. to think about just taking it down differently. Normally, you know, you rig a limb to a tree and you know lower it to the ground and you know, sort of use it as a post or a crane. Uh, and with ash trees, the wood is is not as safe as as we would think it would be mm. uh, once it gets in a good decline. So you got, you know, 25, 30% of the foliage left, a lot of sprouts at the bottom is another sign. Uh -huh. If you're not seeing the blonding, you, know, you just don't get a lot of woodpeckers, but if you have to see a lot of sprouts at the bottom of a tree, go to NH Bugs, you know, the website, the pictures are great on there. Um, and it's just one of those things that you're either treating your trees or the trees are going to be gone. Yeah. You know, three to four years. We're in a cycle right now. We're just getting EAB, you know, this far down the seacoast. We worked with Madbury and Dover quite a bit a few years ago, uh, and it, you know it's spreading. It's coming this way. So the next three to five years, you're going to see a lot of ash dieback, a lot. Um, we had an inventory done. Jamie has the numbers. You could, you could, you know, pull the numbers out of that inventory of the ash trees that were done at the time uh, when Todd was here. I funded an inventory of the city. Uh, wasn't complete, but it was mostly done. Um, so we'd have a rough idea of where the public trees, ash trees are, and um, green ash, you know, is our biggest percentage, I would bet, here in, in Portsmouth rather than white. So does this just affect all types of ash trees? It's not just... Uh, all ash, and it's also it's also hitting the fringe trees. Oh, no. Because we haven't seen evidence oh. of it around here, but it does hit white fringe tree. <clears throat> Darn it. Is that once the kind of supply, quote-unquote, of ash is gone? That's what they, some people are yeah. saying, is that they're jumping to something else. Um, so the good thing about a tree-specific insect is that it usually doesn't jump to anybody else. Uh -huh. So like the red pine scale, mm -hmm. red pines die, red pine scale goes away, you know, whatever moves to another town. Um, <clears throat> the emerald ash borer is hitting, you know, ashes very, very hard. Mm -hmm. It's good at killing off those ashes. Uh, it basically just destroys the plumbing underneath the bark. Mm -hmm. You find an ash tree, peel the bark back, and that kind of stuff's got a little Superman S. Mm -hmm. It just kills one section. No big deal. 
The problem is 50 of his buddies are in the same tree. Mm. Uh, and that's, you know, that's what the big deal is. So taking down these ash, we're mitigating hazard uh, for the public. We're not containing infestation. No, so that's so just too, too bad. It, too late. It's, it's already statewide. Okay. We, you know, we, we, our first health guys had to face reality and we kind of gave up yeah. on a few years ago. Our first health guys are treating trees around the state. So they did treat several trees in Portsmouth. Yeah. Um, we worked with Chuck and we found a bunch of trees over off of like 33, there was a stand of trees over there. Okay. I can figure out where the trees are. Um, it's kind of a tough love thing. Uh, our forest guy, forest health guys, you know, just had to figure out this. You got to treat your trees every couple of years. As soon as you don't treat it. Uh -huh. So what they want to do is they're waiting for the, you know, the wave to go past uh, and treating smaller trees to be here after, you know, after the tidal wave has gone. Uh -huh. um, and it's, it's sort of a seven to 10 year tidal wave. Uh, Concord's got you know dead ash trees all over the place. Any shop and market plaza, you can you know the top two thirds of the trees are dead. Um, some communities are dealing with the ash trees all differently of how whose responsibility is. Um, so Concord's a good example. Of, you know what happened because there was our first infestation, known infestation found in Concord, mm -hmm. um, and you know we're we're just behind the curve on that. So how quickly are they? taking those trees out in Conquer? Uh, some of them are not being taken down. If you go to some of the commercial properties around Concord, they're just waiting. And so have they had very many tree failures? Uh, several, so, you know, fallen over. A perfect spot is the Steeplegate Mall. It's essentially a semi-abandoned, you know, mall complex, you know, and everybody's looking to see who owns those trees. Oh um, and there have been several, you know, they're smaller diameter trees, so they fall in the road, somebody comes and Picks them up, throws them in a truck, whatever, chips them up. Nobody's gotten hurt yet. Not that I know of. The only incident of failure I've seen in Portsmouth was like a 10-inch branch. Uh, came from a really dry top of an ash and it fell on someone's private property. And um, I, he had called. Obviously, it was an incident where I'm not, you know, I just kind of drive by in those in those cases. Yeah. Um, and I ended up just happening to see just a big, a big limb in his backyard. So we have that's all I've really seen. Do we have an estimate of how many ashes we have in Portsmouth. Or can we have a follow-up? I'm, I'm actually, yeah, so I'm going to go and find that inventory. We'll look at that inventory. Yeah. Yeah. We can report back. Curious. Yeah. And AJ, does the state have some um, information already put out since we're not the first community that's hit? Can we just sort of work with Max and kind of adopt some information this, that the state's putting out send for our citizens? Send everybody to NH Bugs. We've been doing that for years. Uh, NH Bug is a website. Public Extension runs it. Our staff's involved. Forest Health, mm -hmm. um, for, U.S. Forest Service, everybody's in it. Uh -huh. And they put together NH Bugs. It's been around for a while. It wasn't just EAB. So it was whatever pest was <coughs> at the time uh -huh. got put on that website. Um, our state websites are lousy, so we partner with Public Extension. Uh, they handle the website. They do the media up blast and all that kind of stuff. And they've been doing this media up blast for you know years now. We've hosted tons of community meetings oh. that are, you know, Concord and Epsom and, you know, Loudon, that whole sort of Canterbury stretch along there was hit harder. Um, I don't know whether that, what was moving it, but it was moving up to... and down the river faster in our state than anywhere else. And it's sort of been coming east. It's going west, but not as fast as it's coming east. Um, and then at some point, there's going to be a line. It's, it's not in Colorado <laughs> County yet. Um, there's a few spots in Grafton County uh, that have it. There's a map right on the, on that NH Bugs website. It's color-coded exactly. map. Uh, it's very complicated, uh -huh. but it ha every uh, every town is color coded to when EAB came to town. Got it in there. But I think we do need a public service announcement. I do so too. People understand. Yeah. Yeah. Stephanie, you know, Stephanie can put something out of what's happened on my ash tree. Send them to NH Bugs. Um, yes. If yes, people are questioning whether they have it, they can click and send them a photo. Um, all our guys, you know, monitor that site with extension, so it's checked every day. Hey, is this my, there's a ton of other green bugs, you know, out there that have nothing to do with Emerald yeah. or, uh, and people send in all kinds of false alarms and that's fine. Yeah. Uh, but our guys can get back to them. Right. Uh, so we have two people that work for our first health uh, that are dealing with EAB. One of them is hundred percent EAB all the time. Uh, and they've been going around the city. So if there's an interest to have somebody come and make a formal presentation or whatever else, or do an ash walk or whatever else, uh, Bill Davidson, you know, can help kind of stuff. Well, that would be um, just oh, so sorry. just so you're aware, we we do have reference to Pest Watch and Ash War on the website. However, it's not populated in the hot links to other sites. Um, so that's, that's something that we'll do. Uh, is we'll make sure um, that information. I know Max is working with Stephanie to put uh -huh. together something already. It just hasn't been posted. We have a we what website, a... Peter. Which what it's website? on the city's website. Oh, the city's website. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. all right. 
in the urban forestry portion of the <clears throat> works clean greenery section. <clears throat> Uh, but it needs to be updated because I noticed it has references, uh, Chuck. So, oh. and would it be um, um, sometimes uh, if somebody has a lot of questions, sometimes I will direct them to our archived meetings to get the information that they need. Would it be you know useful to have Bill come and do a little PR here for us at one of our meetings, and then we could direct people to take a little look at our at that archived meeting for comprehensive information? Yeah. So we have the archived meetings in the. In the website as yeah, well. So right. But I thought maybe we could use that uh, system and have him come and do a, do a talk. Sure. And okay. that could be another media sort of point of mm -hmm. reference. Let me uh, I'll go back 10 Merrimack Street. But why don't we do all of the uh, EAB mm -hmm. trees at once? So we have 10 Merrimack Street, Miller Avenue, uh, 87 Edmond, 55 Edmond. Haven Park, uh, 81 Cottage, 195 Cass, 649 State. Um, and were those the corrected addresses? Um, I think this may be the- um, Yes, yes. Between yep. Dennis and, yep. and um, um, Stephanie. Yeah. So um, if there's no objection, why don't we take those all as one and- Yeah, yeah just give me a we have someone. To Are you here for a um, something on our public hearing on our, our agenda? I am a member of the public, and I was told I could find Peter Britz here, so I'm coming to say hi at the end of this agenda. Um, I do have actually some some issues around the green space and around a lot of stuff that I've been talking to the planning about. Are you Peter? Um, I am Peter, but I'm not Peter Britz. <laughs> <laughs> I think they they get confused. We look so much alike, you know. <laughs> Well, um, Peter, Peter's, um, I'm not sure who directed you to this committee for that. So is this the trees and greenery? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But, but he's not here. Okay, sorry. No, he doesn't, or he he doesn't not be here. He's not part of this committee. Okay, no. that's all right. But I'm glad to actually be here because I, there's a number of committees. I was just talking to Dave when um, he's actually our neighbor and about some of these different committees going on within the city. Um, I am a native of Portsmouth. I'm back 25. I live on the West Coast now and there's a number of issues going on in properties we own and I'm interested in finding out how the city's handling a number of things and, and to become a, an active participant in some of the conservation efforts, which I actually bring um, the background in, in that. Before sure, I if, if, say, if so. you'd like to come up to the seat to speak oh, sure. to this, it'd be, it'd be, it picks up on the mic better. Sure, I said, this is your public comment. Period. Is that what this is now? So I'm well, it is not. Really well, it's kind of not. <laughs> right. <laughs> kind of not. Right now, we we're, we're talking about. But the I like your idea. Specific grouping them together. Yeah. Oh, I see. Are oh, you okay. talking to any of these specific? Not anything removals? specific here. Nope. 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 So I would. Overall. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I don't know if you have a public comment period during the this kind of a session or not because I don't want to interrupt. Well, why don't we finish the agenda. motion? We could finish these. That would be terrific. All of the sit back there, out of your way. Emerald. Ash or or <laughs> uh, so anybody have any um, questions about that? Do we have a motion to recommend removal of all of those trees that I just mentioned? I move to recommend that we remove sadly all of these ash trees that are infected. I'll second that. Seconded by AJ. Any discussion? I have 10 altogether. Uh, all in favor of recommending removal of all of those 10 trees. I, okay, and I, I really like Max's idea about how to handle infested trees and the sort of intensity of where they're at and how quickly to get to them. And I would thank you. Yeah, it's um, so just a yeah, another comment on that. It's it, I don't know, we're really just addressing the worst of the worst at this point as you can see some of these on miller there that one is is yeah. practically stone dead at this point um i like and, stone dead yeah. <laughs> and the re so you know my understanding of how because i've i was on the crew for three years before this so my understanding was if it's stone dead we take a picture we do the removal and it's gone as opposed to coming to the committee because we have the obligation to make yeah. the space safer and by doing so we just remove the hazard right then and there. But I also wanted there to be public record of this tree uh -huh. and EAB. So that's why I, I know it's maybe a little bit overkill to present this to you all. And of course it's it's gonna get removed, but in especially in this specific instance and others, 
um, I did want there to be um, just more discussion on it and bringing it to you all and making sure that we all are aware of the impact EAB has had on all the yes, public trees. So have we moved this? Are we finished with this? I believe we moved that. But we didn't have a motion yet. And I point out that Dennis is the Dean Emeritus of um, <laughs> forestry bugs, et cetera, in the state of New Hampshire. He had the badge. Forest Society. So <laughs> just so, one, one point I'd like to make is that um, we do a good job taking care of the public trees. Uh, there are many, many, many more private ash trees hmm. out there as well. And I've noticed a number of them dying on private property and have some concern that people do not understand the significance um, and, the, and you know how dangerous um, the situation is. Um, so I think the outreach um, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, that we're, we're planning on doing and people being concerned about the trees coming down, that's great. But I think it's an opportunity to explain to them you know, that you need to look around your own yard mm -hmm. uh, or yes. your neighbor's yard and, and point out you know, if you're seeing that blonding, if you're seeing the die off on the top of the trees. Sorry, Peter, I think that's a community, I think that's an opportunity for the city to host something for private citizens and ash tree uh, education. Is that the greenery, the, the <laughs> women's uh, garden, club. garden club volunteering to do that? Uh, perhaps, yeah, with this woman, that Atlantic Heights woman, very yeah. invigorating, the Portsmouth, sure, we can come together, I could I'll work on that, no problem. Um, which also brings me to a point that at, um, uh, Max and I talked about, when we are removing these trees, would it be a good opportunity to also post something on those ash trees with a little blurb about the Emerald Ash? I, I think that's a great idea. Just Take, to, you know, get some of those signs and, and yeah. where we're taking them down to drop it and say, and put it on the ash and tree. And we can, yes. yeah, so we and can- a link yeah. to like that. information. I think specifically when we were standing at, at the corner a what? No. We'll telegraph to that tree that it's sick. Oh, sorry. Right. Okay. <laughs> well, when we were standing Goats. near that tree, that go well, we'll go on nameless. Um, we were talking about maybe having a sign yes. before the removal. Yes. Right. So it's a good opportunity. Having there be that signage with photos of more declined mm -hmm. emerald ash borer trees, photos of an actual emerald ash borer to scale, uh, you know, those those photos yeah. that are all over the place, having something like that. And then obviously we can put them on other Trees right. across the city. Can we fast track that? So next can, time when you yeah. when you have ash trees on our agenda, could we would it be possible to have that already constructed and put on the tree? I can by next so, meeting. Is that so, really quick? I would say we'll we'll strive to do that. Thank you, Peter. We have many <laughs> we have many other demands I on know. our workload, and the staff that is responsible for creating those signs is currently doing night shifts. Uh, because of um, painting uh, requirements on the streets. Okay. So if we are that. able to do that, we would love to. It's the, we think it would be a great opportunity for public edu education. Yes. However, we have limitations. I've always loved working with you. <laughs> I think Peter's really saying they're busy, but they'll do it, Bob. <laughs> they'll try as best we can. Uh, okay. okay. Um, we have the motion made by Pat, seconded by AJ. Yeah. To recommend removal of the 10 trees 13. infected with emerald 13. 13. ash borer. Uh, 13. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, 245 Middle Street, Azel Culver at the Portsmouth Housing Authority property um, that um, has some dieback. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> could be pruned or removed. And yeah, so I, I made that note in there. Um, I can, I'm really indifferent about, <laughs> funny to say, but I am relatively indifferent about how this goes forward. So we can spend the time to prune it. That'll take as long to remove as it will to prune because of all the branches that are on there that have died back. So it's just, uh -huh. when I think about all the other workload that we have, um, a part of me does want to go forward with the removal, but then the other part of me that's like, no, the other half of this tree is still alive. We can remove these hazards and and have it, you know, still meet an objective, right? Keeping that area relatively safe for the housing authority um, that's there. So I has I it been pruned to, before? Not, not, um, no, well, not that I'm aware. There's pruning cuts inside of it, but it was. See, sitting next to Peter has caused you to start thinking about the cost of <laughs> yeah. osmosis. So, yeah. I think in light of everything else that's going on, I, I would I would feel more comfortable with a prune for this tree. It's noticeable, but I, I I can't appreciate the time and money spent. But 
I've always been fascinated by that Zell Cooler at that location. Me I would too. hate yeah. to see it come down. If, Where is it? Yes. Um, right in the right there. Between them. So one, one uh, it's right there, the little one, island. One, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. So one, um, the half street, nearest street, us street is so. declined. So it's. Sorry, so, what's the species? We wouldn't be better served by, by removing it and planting. There is a, a, another split. tree there. I mean, if we if it's a declining tree and it's Kate, going to spend a lot of time pruning it back and then it's going to continue to decline. Um, I'm split on the be back better. side. So going with that, I would like to make let Max's crew make that as they start to prune it. Let them make the call if they need to take it down. So there is a seam that I noticed. There are some okay. structural issues, but again, it's so it's a relatively squat Zelkova, right? It's so I'm not super concerned about it being this humongous split if it were to happen. And I think it's the odds of that are relatively low, but mm -hmm. who knows what levels of decay or right. cavities are ultimately It's just in the there. midst of all the asphalt what's, and what's parking lot. And so road salt, I mean, I, you know, I think it's just, I think it, we're at the point where it's just really big for the the little island space that it's in. There are exposed roots it's really close grow. to the walking oh, path. Yeah. There, it, I mean, I'm sure. The housing authority is using road salt, so it's probably getting a 360 degree application of road salt. Hmm. The fact that it's in that little island, um, there's a big dumpster or something beside it. I think that, <coughs> that might, yeah, that's uh, a yeah, that's all parking right there, so yeah. it really is confined so, to a small space. So the motion is to um leave the removal of pruning to Max's discretion, but keeping in mind we want to and preserve shade there some shade there during the lifetime of dick and i which I, <laughs> um i i have no problem again just to reiterate i have no problem with i second that yeah. so all in favor hey, you made the motion oh no, made i made, made the motion. Oh. so they say, see say what stuff. the motion is again they may see some stuff up in that crown that we're not seeing from here it's a you know it's a pretty tight crown there's a lot of branches in there it's multi-stem you know Zalcovas just do this so they're going to see some stuff that we can't see right now they're already on site with the truck. They got to make that judgment call. I'm letting them prune it or have the option to remove that tree at the same, you know, within five minutes, you know, make that decision when they're up on that tree uh, and let them take that tree down. So if we feel like that tree should be removed, we should vote against this motion. Correct. No, the I'm making a friendly amendment to the idea that this tree is being taken down. But I wanted to make a motion to remove the tree. Okay. So I would vote against this motion my change yes uh -huh. <laughs> okay so age <laughs> See, where are we it's a double so you, have, you have to make the motion to take it down first because i'm, I'm already a amending motion on the floor yes say that again Aiden. there's a motion on the floor to prune it and if it looks terrible when they start pruning it to take it down okay so let's vote on that first okay all in favor of the motion to prune it. And if it looks like it needs to be taken down at Max's discretion, it will be taken down. All in favor of that motion. Say aye. 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 And since all, the all scribe's not here, we motion. might want to take a little Dennis. Note. Two and three. Dennis. Three. So it's four to three. Was that? Five uh, to three. Five to three. Five to three. So that we goes with AJ's motion. Okay. Um, let me go through just some of the last things on our agenda before we do public discussion. Um, um, update on the tree planting. Um, 400th. Yeah, we are uh, we are still watering all the trees that the city has planted. Um, that's where we're. That's where I, I guess I don't know what um, what the expectation is for an update at this from point. Private citizens for help. Um, actually, we've been still getting a lot of calls about uh, if there are more trees to give away. So that, I mean, knowing that there is still interest in that, uh, I'd be, I think it would, it'd be a good idea to somehow do another tree giveaway at some point in the future. So I don't know what that may or may not look like, but I have interest in It'll be a conversation to have a little time further down the road. Our tree is so, leafing like crazy. It looks great. Awesome. What's your mortality rate of the bare root plant unfortunately um a few species have not so a few zelkovas have not taken and oh. actually i think the majority of one the ones variety. a little out of school you've lost three or four of those okay yeah. uh really wow yeah i think uh, hackberries i think some of the hackberries were 
I think they were DOA, unfortunately. Um, Where do you house these trees while they're being waited? Yeah, so we get a delivery from Schichtel's Nursery. They're based in upstate New York, and they are bare root trees. Are you familiar with bare root? Are they, and bare root. Bare root. Bare root. Bare root. So they don't come with like a dirt or a cage or anything on them. They come oh, in not. plastic bags. The roots are coated in cellulose gel, which keeps the roots really wet while they're in storage. And we store them at Public Works. And Ooh. it takes us like three weeks to plant. It took us about three weeks to plant 200 trees. Okay. And they're all, are they all the same species? Or is that no, right? so we did something like 25 different, different species. tree species wow. this spring. Um, they have no nutrients while they're sitting there. They're just no, sitting. but they are in a relatively dormant um, stage okay. because it's early spring. We turn the lights off, turn the heat off. It keeps them from, yeah. you know, feeling the need to put out leaves or anything like that. So um, yeah, at least as far as an update, uh, you know, we're monitoring where if they are completely stone dead, again, like those alcovas, we will just pull them out and not even bother including them on our watering list. But there are some, I think the service berries in particular, uh, some haven't yet popped, but they are still flexible. They still have a cuticle on them. So mm. we are uh, monitoring those as we go. Um, oddly enough, some of the the sorbus hybridia, the oak leaf mountain ash, <laughs> they've died from. It's like half the tree is alive, and maybe I don't know. I don't, I'm sure you may have seen it, but like a whirl of branches is still alive, and those are still going. So I don't have high hopes for those by next spring. But a lot of monitoring, still watering, and we're planning on doing a compost tea and mycorrhizal application within the next couple of weeks. So. Okay. Right. Good. Thank, Thank you. you. Can I ask one more question about yeah. it? Is it okay? Um, so the 400 trees thing came up in our discussion with Daigle last, last Friday um, because we're, we own a property that is close to the Pine Street playground mm. and uh, they're doing all kinds of, uh, I don't know if there's a big old yeah. development there <laughs> and familiar. that you're familiar with the whole thing. And then what we were told is that the, um, the trees that they're starting to decimate there because of the pipe are going to be replaced by the trees that the city has on hand. And I'm hearing that these trees may not survive. So yes. Uh, asking, like, should they be more careful about taking out some of that, you know, established growth in that park instead of destroying it all? I mean, I had a neighbor's meeting in my yard um, Friday and, and Daglin walked across the street to, 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 to meet us and, you know, we're voicing various concerns in that particular block because there's a bunch of them. So I, I, I could so. give you a brief update on yeah. the genesis of that e exercise. As you probably know, historically, there was ponding in that area, even prior to the yes. construction project. Oh, yes. As part of the upgrade, as part of that construction project, the developer agreed to run a drainage line yes. from that low point over to a, an existing drain line, historic drain line at the end of, what's the name of the street, Myrtle? Mar uh, uh, I think um, Meredith. 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 Yeah, and Meredith. Uh, yeah, familiar. So, but, mm -hmm. that, but that line had collapsed and that's a public line. The old one, yeah. Yeah, the old one is that, so the public yeah. responsibility was there. So there was additional drainage coming from that area. The residents in that area were interested in getting that water pulled away. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's two new houses that, you know, but that's whatever people's opinions are on that. But we had an existing problem that needed to be addressed. Yeah. We worked with everybody to figure out the best location for that new drain line, which would be cutting diagonally across the park over to Pine Street. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've heard of that. Um, to an existing drain line, which will then help alleviate the, the ponding uh, and it will reestablish that drain line. Yeah. We believe that the location of that line is far enough away from the oak trees. <clears throat> um, we worked with our staff. Um, and so when we go through areas like that, we do not... Uh, intentionally damage trees. We do the best we can sure. uh, to protect trees. And when we're digging around roots, uh, we have Max um, available to help assist with the uh, with the crew that's doing the work. Um, so the concerns may be, um, you know, they're valid, definitely. Um, but if there's additional trees that need to be planted, we don't just do this once every 10 years. We do this every year. We evaluate locations throughout the city. And last year we planted 100 years, tip 100 trees. Typically we plant 100 trees a year. This year we did 200 plus, we gave away 200. So it was a 400 tree total. We will be continuing to do tree giveaways in the future because it is so, inter you know, people are so excited about it. Yeah. Um, but we do annually plant at least a hundred trees. Uh, and we look to areas that uh, are that are in need of trees, that recent tree removals occurred. 
Um, so we, you know, and we diversify the species that are planted out there to try to make sure that they survive. Do you, and, and, then do you work steward, with and then steward them for two years mm -hmm. um, with watering, okay. which is a, a, a lot of responsibility. And Lot staking, life. watering, maintaining, mm -hmm. ultrings, uh, composty applications. Yeah. It's, it's not a one and done. It's very thoughtful. And, and then if it's planted on public owned land, we will maintain that in perpetuity. If it's, um, it, at least in the case of the giveaway, the giveaway was to allow people to plant them wherever on private property. Yeah. And that's something we don't maintain. But obviously, if someone calls and asks about the tree we gave them and looking for some help or guidance, I have no problem giving like a five minute phone call about that. That's no problem. I would take so. you up on that because we may want to plant some of those that you have. And I think that's sure. a wonderful program. I actually do need to run out of here. And I appreciate you letting me ask questions. Um, the, the last thing I would leave, I guess, the group with on this moment is regarding the constant discussion about, and it's not just group, but in general, the the need to remove trees versus keeping what you can um, and the, you know, the, the carbon footprint that changes dramatically when you have something that's, just, everybody knows that, right? Uh -huh. Established growth versus new growth. I will share that on another property of ours in the West End, uh, a developer has come in and um, Chop down a very old growth, five foot diameter tree that was on our lot. It's an historic building, not an historic um, district, but an historic building. As I said, I'm a native to this town, taught in all the public schools as a when I was at UNH um, as sub as a substitute teacher, and um, I I it incenses me to see the carelessness that happens that got in the town now, since I haven't lived here in some time, my dad's here, and some of my family is, um, said, oops, I, I chopped this down and I thought it was mine. <laughs> I thought it was mine, right? So I know that's not a public matter, but it's definitely this sense of we can just take down old growth and it doesn't matter. And, you know, and, and, and I think that, that if somehow this, the city could send a message to the public that, you know, if I, I talked to Kate Homey before this meeting and she's, she said, there is some, some efforts to consider um, protecting old growth, even no matter where it is in this city. And I, I think that that's something so to I, consider. I appreciate what you're saying. And, and I just really need to correct you. Oh, uh, which one? The, sorry. Well, your opinion or your or your statement relative to the city's lack of care and concern. Oh, I'm not uh, saying trees the, is, is, I don't is know. I'm not saying the city uh, is definitely disconcerting. <laughs> so I don't mean to actually say the city itself. I'm saying that there's a lot of there's a lot of movement in this city now because of the development, private development. Mm -hmm. And sometimes there's great, you know, barriers and sometimes there or not I shouldn't say barriers, sometimes there's great cooperation mm -hmm. and sometimes there's just a lot of carelessness. And the city couldn't have anything to do with what happened on our property. It wasn't the city. I'm just I'm sharing with you that that's it's happening around the city, developers that are coming in to just take over areas without um, regard to the the rules and regulations. That's that's what I'm trying to say, and I, it, it's my hope that. Okay, I, I'm the, sorry. We've got to get yeah. back to the agenda. I, I committed to go much. to the I, the, yeah. uh, I, I the um you see what I'm saying? the uh, flag day ceremony at nine. So, um, just, can, can you identify yourself? Oh, absolutely. Um, Lisa Hagen McMahon, and if you wanted, if there's minutes or whatever. Um, and I am, it's like I said, from the town and on properties here. And I'll be joining some of the committees for the, the green space and others. Thanks for, Any for having me. Any relation to Billy? Pardon me? Any relation to Billy? Uh, William Haggerty. Yeah, my dad is William Haggerty. And I have a brother, William. I have a brother, David. They're both so, in town. Do you know him? Yeah, Billy's a biker. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's your name, sir? I didn't, I'm sorry. My name's Peter Rice. Peter Rice. Yeah. Oh, you're Peter Rice. Oh, oh okay. Okay. Is that okay? I didn't. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I met your guys over at Union Street. They were they were very very helpful. So thank you for your thank time. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you so much. Uh, update, update on city um, commercial alley and other city improvements. I don't know how much time we get to go into that. I just wanted to say on commercial alley. Um, but how many years ago did David Defosis come in here and talk about the tree on commercial alley and the improvements mm -hmm. that were planned? And it reminded me of that um, the improvements that were made probably was a 10-year project of coordinating six different utilities, getting it into the, the budget of every utility, getting into the budget of the city, getting the money, money appropriated, getting the contracts let, 
and um, involved, went over probably three different city councils, um, two different manage, two different city administrations, um, uh, and it, it, I, I never read these articles that somebody you put on or you put on, and I'm, uh, it, it was just dismissive of ten years of work to make the improvements in Commercial Alley. And I went through there last week and I'm thinking, did something happen here? I mean, it you go through commercial, it doesn't look like, you know, the, the bricks are back down. It looks as good or better than it ever looked. And um, I, I just thought it, the article dismissed an awful lot of work by an awful lot of people over an awful lot of years. Good and, point. Uh, but anyway. Um, that was, I just, I don't know anybody else had anything to say about that, but, and Joanne is not here, but, uh, right. she I, did, I don't know if she did, uh, um, text the whole group, but she did say, or email the whole group. She did say that historically they've always kind of taken care of that. The neighbors around yeah, there planted right, animals, that way. let's say not structural things. So people fuss. Yeah. Well, um. I promise you, I'm pretty much be there for his comments at the flag day thing. <laughs> I got I got a pop motion to adjourn. I would could we? I would love to table the um, the beech leaf disease. I was down in uh, the the North Shore, and it is happening there. And I have a beech tree, and I'm freaking out. So I'd love to talk about that next time. Go to the NH Bugs. It is here in Hampshire. Okay. He's plugging NH Bugs today. Oh we, we have good research. We have a good research project going on right now. We took trees from Portsmouth, planted them at Bear Brook, and we're trying to. NHBugs.com or .gov? NH, uh, yeah, NHBugs.org. Oh, .org. .org. Yep. Um, Put that on the Emerald Ash. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we... Just as a footnote, we are proceeding with chemical treatment of the four large ash trees in the South Cemetery. Oh, oh. ash trees. Well, yeah. like, if there are other public ash trees that you want treated, we have the guns and we can load them out. If you've got, you it'll, can borrow the guns. It'll be circumstantial oh, and yeah, I'll, 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 think, I'll consider that for sure. They are middle. Consider it. We can help out with chemicals too. Kyle's got a bunch. Okay. Um, but ash trees got treated every two years. So uh, last thing, Portsmouth 400, there is an interest to put a tree down at the Coolidge Mansion. It was supposed to be planted for the queen and then she passed away and said so we can't put a tree down there for the queen. So there's going to be a state planting down the Coolidge Mansion. Is there for some the king now? Yeah, for the king. <laughs> um, so there is going to be a planting down there. Uh, connect with Stephanie on this or is there any more targeted dates that the city's trying to put something together on this or? Um, yeah, Stephanie or Monty, um, oh. uh, who's Stephanie's super, you know, oversees it's Stephanie's work as well. Okay. So either way, I'm going to meet with uh, Monty in a few minutes, so I can um, I'll have him reach out to you. Please, yeah, yeah. Uh, the meeting adjourned, Peter. The meeting no. is adjourned. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. So it's at the Coolidge. Let me go Coolidge. What are they going to yeah. plant? Uh, I want to. Um, an English oak. I assume it's going to be a white oak. There was a whole big thing to put a white pine down. A bunch of people wanted to put a white pine down in there to snub the queen because the nest pine and England and everything else. And it's like, well, you don't do this for memorial plantings. <laughs> so, so there was a bunch of different issues. So it's kind of just inside the the second gate, the lower parking lot gate on the right hand side. There's a few trees and stuff that are taken out. I've got to take out the rest of the ground material. We're supposed to do it last fall and then she passed away, so then we couldn't play. We're actually working with the British